Hey guys, it is Make It By Maritza. Welcome to my um, first official YouTube video. Um, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to perfect your base application. All the comments and questions I got, or like asks, I guess, on Instagram and TikTok were more so about like foundation, basics, things like that. So, yeah. I do want to, I remember something now that I forgot to talk about in the video, so I'm gonna put it in here now um, if you find that you're not using powder and you're okay you're okay not everybody has to bake not everybody has to use powder some people can do just their powder foundation and it looks amazing some steps in this you can use just to better understand application I have a lot of videos planned I'm excited so here we go all right, so just jumping right on into the video, um, I do want to state something. If you are looking to prevent slippage, or say if your nose area, your foundation slides a lot, one thing that I do want to recommend is finding a gel moisturizer, especially if you have oily skin. I know we're always like, you know, I don't want to moisturize, it's going to make me greasier, but that's a lie. That's... I promise that's a lie as well as take into account the type of primer you're using if you're using something like the elf pore putty primer it's mildly the reason why my skin looks like it does so we're just gonna ignore that I hope this lets you guys in on the fact that I'm um, human and my skin is not flawless at all um, that beauty filter on TikTok that will will make you feel some type of way as well as, you know, if you're accidentally buying a hydrating primer, this is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Silk. This is a hydrating primer. No. A great option, in my opinion, would be something that's like the Smashbox um, Oil and Shine Control. This one, it does have dimethicone in it, which is okay. It's got to smooth the skin. But it also has more of that, like, gel texture. So it's not just stuffing your pore. It's actually going to <clears throat> smooth over the skin and mattify. That is, I think, something that, like, my hand feels dry. <laughs> That's something that you want to keep in mind. Um, as well as your skincare routine. Like, are you doing your best effort to control, blah, blah, to control the oil on your skin? Because if you're not, I'll tell you right now, it's not going to get fixed. Not anytime soon, at least. Um, I do firmly believe in sleeping with an oil. It's what's helped me. My skin ranges from normal to acne prone. So this is just what we're dealing with. Actually, anybody, when I do their makeup, I do take into account like, okay, so what's your skin type? What's your issues? What are we wanting to make sure that we take care of today? What do you not want to have pop up throughout the day? Whether that be discoloration, oiliness, pores, you know? It's just a profound factor if you are acne prone using like a pore filling primer it's gonna break you out it's going to it's gonna be part of the reason why you're still breaking out same thing with the benefit professional line it is a great smoothing primer it really is but she gonna break you out that's they hate me on it they're great products but it's the tea there is one that I will love until the day that I die because it has never broken me out I'm gonna up, um, look up the ingredients in this and let y'all know, but it's the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Primer. I swear by it. It's also pore treatment, which is awesome. It um, mattifies the skin, absorbs oil throughout the day. I can attest to it because I'd wear it all the time when I was a grease slick and oh, love this stuff. This is the primer that I use when I want to smooth out my pores. If I don't wanna go in with like a heavy powder on top later, that's, that's the primer that I use. And I literally only use that much. That's another thing, is if you're using too much primer, no, no. Also, are you prepping your skin before you apply your makeup? Are you washing it properly? Are we doing your toner? Are you hydrating? And you'll see I only press it right through here. I'm really working into the skin. I've got my mirror off to the side, so if I'm looking over here, that's what I'm doing. But yeah, this one I will consistently swear by. I also did find that like when I would use that primer, I don't know if it's the treatment in it, 
and I'm pasty so I turn pink after I touch my face so just get used to seeing that <laughs> I get distracted I think it's the treatment in it that kind of helps prevent breakouts it is expensive it is 45 to 46 US dollars I am sorry it is cheaper than the Tatcha Silk Canvas that's 52 dollars that also so fun fact the Tatcha Silk Canvas and the elf pore putty primer borderline identical ingredients I had a comment on TikTok and I went and looked that up one day and I was like interesting the only like big 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 difference is the silk extract that's in the silk canvas and a couple of other things maybe like fragrance but they both use like squalane dimethicone a couple of other like oil based things but I thought that was pretty cool I wanted to share I'm actually gonna try something a little different today I do have both Fenty Beauty foundations. This is the Fenty Beauty Hydrating Foundation and the Fenty Beauty Matte Foundation. I want to mix the two. I have one shade in 150 and one shade in 120. I think that's going to make my perfect match. As well as I want to try like a textural thing. Because I have normal skin and I don't get oily throughout the day, I can kind of do what I want <laughs> with my base and get away with it. I'm doing like a pump of each. And I have my Juno & Co. Lavender Sponge. It's a little bit squishier. If you didn't see my TikTok, I cut up my actual um, blue Juno & Co. Microfiber Sponge. So I don't have her anymore. But this one's my personal favorite. I do have a code with them. It's Maritza in all caps and the number 10 for 10% 10 off. It is a commission code. You do not have to use it if you don't want to. I'm just sharing. If you want to save money and support me, um, bet. I'm here for it. Yeah, that'll be a good shade. I'm just gonna go in and gently dab the foundation on. I saw a video on TikTok of somebody mixing the two together and I was like, I wonder if I still have my other one. Cause a lot of times what I'll just do is I'll just use my 150 and make it work. It's a good shade. I have a lot of like surface redness in my skin naturally. So that's why it's like, I like to match to my neck personally so that way I don't have floating head syndrome. But like I'm equally pale all over, so it's fine. Look at how well this sponge just builds everything. I do prefer a more buildable sponge. Everybody is different, so it is okay if you like the other classic blue microfiber sponge or a morphe sponge it it doesn't it's not that deep i don't care that much as long as you're happy in your makeup routine we're good there's no issue all right so another thing that can cause your makeup to slide is your foundation choice so if you're choosing a more luminous foundation or something glowy and you know you're oily and you don't prep for oily skin underneath or you don't powder where you're oily I look like a mess right now but yeah your your foundation's gonna slide so at least powder like your nose area or your t-zone um, if you're oily and your makeup slides there and I wouldn't say you necessarily have to bake I don't think really everybody needs to bake I've said it before I'll say it again but yeah I'm gonna take a little bit on my nose. I'm not gonna go near my under eye. I'm gonna save that spot for concealer. It's crazy the difference of how uneven my skin actually is. Blows my mind. <laughs> it's okay. But I literally posted about my YouTube videos and my channel in general like what? Two, three days ago? And if this is up, I'm pre-recording just in case we hit 1k sooner than I expected, which we are. I just wanted it to be up and ready. <laughs> Look at that. Now I'll take a little bit and like a little swipe it down my neck, but because it's a good or decent match, I'm not that worried about it. Yeah, that'll do. So another like few examples that I have just kind of set aside. If you're oily, some great options. Cover effects, they also have a great shade range. Fenty Beauty, duh. I am actually a big fan of 
the Candid line from Revlon. Another one. Ooh, I just dropped a million things. It wasn't good for me because they don't have a particular shade for me because I'm more neutral and I got this guy. A lot of my followers have raved about it and my friends that it's great for oily skin. So if you're oily, I try it and it's full coverage. I can attest to that, it is full coverage. Another one, if you don't want like heavy coverage but you want something that's not gonna break down, Urban Decay, their new weightless foundation. I really like, I also find this is like my perfect match in foundation, which I don't have often. Um, another one is the Ordinary High Coverage Foundation. I'm gonna check the um, shade range on this and let y'all know. But just look at, you know, what it says it does. If it's a matte foundation, typically you can be okay. Um, another thing that you can do is put a more matte concealer in this area versus your foundation. So if you guys saw my TikTok a while back about keeping your foundation away from your nose, my nose itches, and under eye area, that can be another great tactic. This is gonna be a long video, I hate myself already, but I'm taking my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I'm just gonna pop a little bit here. Now, because I have no product on my eye area, it's not gonna look gross, which, bless it. And it's like a hair lighter than my natural shade. Like, I can actually get away with spot concealing with this. Using my same sponge, and I'm bringing it up into the under eye. Now, if you have like creasy under eyes, if you're more mature and you're like, everything folds into my lines. If that's the case, you can still do a sponge on the under eye, but while your concealer is damp, take a more synthetic brush. Oh god, mine are all dirty. Damn it. Found one. Take a more synthetic brush. This is a Morphe M173 and gently go backwards in the under eye with your concealer. So you can take a little bit and go backwards. What this does is the bristles of the brush actually help smooth the concealer into the under eye. So that way, one, you're not overdoing it with product, and two, nothing's gonna cake or settle or get greasy. Another like thing I like to do personally, if my eyes are really dry and I'm like, I need something, what I like to take is actually my P. Louise base, and they have a lot of shades in this, which is awesome. And I will straight up use this as under eye concealer. It's not too waxy, it offers great coverage, and they have more of a correcting tone. So mine, I got Rumor Number 2, classic, and it actually has a little bit of a peachiness to it, so it can correct certain areas without being like too much. It's like a little bit on my eyelids. I like to make sure that like, it still looks like skin because I don't want my base to look makeup-y, especially when I'm in person or if I'm going out and about. I look really white right now. I'm gonna fix it. Now I'm gonna go in with my Anastasia Fawn Contour Stick. This is like a perfect shade from super, 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 super fair skin tones to even some medium to light skin tones. I've used it on somebody who's like, a good shade reference would be almost to 300 in the Fenty line because it's just neutral, especially when you want a soft contour. I'm gonna take it right on my sponge. I'm not gonna really explain what I'm doing with the contour because I'll post another video about that. That'll be another excuse because I did get a lot of comments about that too. So I'm just gonna fast forward to when I'm done. All right, so I have my contour on. I don't have any other product on. I did my under eye base prime the nines. Another important step is powder. I've put these in plenty of favorites videos before. The first one that I think everybody should have is the Fenty Beauty Invisimat Blotting Powder. This one is truly invisible. There's no color to it. So if you are wanting to touch up, up bleh, touch up throughout the day, um, or just you know set your face with a non-heavy powder, mattifies, blurs the skin, and there's no flashback. Like not a drop of flashback. So we love her. Now, it, um, if you're bougie, Charlotte Tilbury, Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. 
I have to say it slow or else I mess it up. But this one is awesome. It does blur the skin. It can brighten. It doesn't really brighten on me because I'm the same color as the powder, but it can. They have three shades. Charlotte, if you see this, please make me some more. Please. Now, if you are dry skin, you can reach for the Charlotte powder. You can also reach for a couple other powders. The Milk um, Set and Blur powder. This one's talc free. Same thing with the Hourglass powder. Biggest difference is you can bake with this one. You don't want to bake with this one. The Hourglass powder actually has micro reflex in it or like pearls, so it doesn't um, bake well. <laughs> I found out. Self experience. Now, if you are oily, I have a couple different powders. One is the Fenty Loose powder. I don't have my hands on it. Maybelline Fit Me powder. There's a buzz on my hand. That one's another great one. As well as Laura Mercier. Okay. The Too Faced Peachy Matte Powder. It also smells delightful. And it's really, really smoothing. So, uh, yes. And the Anastasia, I don't know why I just had like a pause in that, but the Anastasia powder, they do have a lot of shades in this and there are more correcting shades as well. So it's really nice for a multitude of skin tones, not just, um, you know, one skin tone. The other lines I did share, they also do have multiple options. Same thing with Fenty, obviously. And uh, Maybelline Fit Me, which is great. Um, now, if you want a dupe for the Fenty Invisimat blotting powder, you can do the e.l.f. option. Um, I would stay away from HD powders. They're these loose white powders. This is great if you are super oily. So if you're super oily and you're like, I just want to do a little touch up, the way you would use that is go in with your normal complexion, you know, do everything else that you normally would, down to your highlight and the last, last thing, and then just do a light, light dusting of this type of powder with a more fluffy brush, so something almost like this. They're very loose, very fluffy. You would dip in with a little bit, knock it off. You almost don't want to see any in your brush and then just press it into the skin, especially around the nose area. I don't like them. I like them on the under eye because they are very smoothing. It has silica and dimethicone in it, but um, yeah, no, not for me. It makes me look like a, a crustable cake and I don't like that, so. <laughs> No thanks. But today I'm gonna go in with the um, milk powder. This is by far my personal favorite powder. Um, it does everything I need it to do and more. And I find it absorbs oil throughout the day without making me look cakey. I'm gonna show you guys how I truly use this powder. Depends on the day. If I want a really, really smooth finish, I will take a sponge, my same lavender sponge, press in the flat side. And I'm not baking with this. I'm going to go and gently press it into the skin. Only where I know makeup can break up on myself. So throughout my nose area. I'm not going directly into the under eye yet. I do have a different method on myself for that. Same thing over here. Around the laugh line area. I don't really have laugh lines. The biggest fix I can recommend for laugh lines is truly laying less product there. The more product in a certain area, like your nose crevices, your forehead wrinkles, anything like that, your eye area, I think the more product there is, the more product there is to crack and crease. So the only way you're really gonna fix that is by using less product. So less is more in this house. Press a little bit into my forehead. So I know you're probably like, oh my gosh, Marisa, that's so much powder. What are you doing? <laughs> I promise it's not. The microfiber sponge only picks up what you need. So that means you're never going to go in with too much product, which I'm here for. Now when it comes to the under eye, I do take a separate step. And I'm going to go in with that same concealer brush. And I'm literally going to take my time, do one eye at a time, buff it out. Just go gently back and forth. I like to make sure... My nose it just <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that that is not creasing or settling and then I'm gonna take a fluffy powder brush this one's a Sonia cash one that's like from a set from years ago but a lot of brands have this type of brush it's literally just super fluffy and wide massage it into the powder and then I just gently sweep underneath the eye 
I don't like to use translucent powder on my eyes typically because it's a little bit heavier of a powder. So that way if I don't use that and I use a thinner powder like a blotting powder or even the HD powder, um, Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, Becca has a powder, Makeup Forever has a powder, e.l.f. has a loose, obviously. Um, a lot of brands have HD powders. So those are great for the under eye area, especially for my more mature queens of the world. Look at that. Perfect. Now you see my skin still has a little bit of glow to it. It's because I only set in specific areas. I like to really create that skin-like finish. Now if I go in with too much powder, it's not gonna have a skin-like finish, at least not until like the very last step. If you do want to bake, if you love baking, bake. I don't care. I want you to be happy with your makeup. It's not that deep to me. I'll say it time and time again. But um, do you. I'll still, you know, cut into my jawline a little bit. I do cut my nose whenever I bake. It stays there for like 10 seconds, but I'm gonna go finish up my bronzer and all that, and then I'll be back. So this is me back with my finished face. There are a couple other steps that I do want to share with you um, before wrapping things up. So the last step that I like to do, I have my base on, everything's on, even if I have a full eyeshadow look on, is setting spray. Some people love setting spray, some people don't, whatever. I personally will always recommend them, especially if you want to melt product back into the skin. Right now, my face is dry because I put a lot of powder on it, everything's on, I look glowy because I put highlighter on, but I want to recommend a few setting sprays that I have here. One that I think is slept on, I know everybody's like, it's just Urban Decay, it's the same thing, but there is a specific difference that Urban doesn't do. So the Skin Denavia setting spray, even the green marble, this one is really great at just adhering your foundation into the skin and creating a layer. It almost creates like a webbing on the skin underneath powder. So the trick with this one is to do all of your liquids and creams first and then give yourself a spritz across the face. Let that dry. Go in with your powder. Do your thing. Finish your face and give a little tss, 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 one more. You are locked in. So this is why I use this one specifically on any wedding client that I have because it's a kit must have or if you're oily, if your makeup cracks, separates, whatever, it's a must. Now, if you just want longevity to lock in pigment, melt, like melt your makeup back in, that's when you can go ahead and do the Urban Decay. I have the jumbo bottle because I love it. Um, this one, great, still has a great mister. This smells a little weird, but we all get past that. It kinda smells like hairspray. But this is just a classic. It is meant to help last with your makeup. I do wanna break one more stigma. Most makeup isn't transfer proof. If you touch your face, your makeup's gonna come off on your hand. If you itch your face, your makeup's gonna come off. It, I've helped a lot of clients in the past and they're like, why is it when I when I rub my face, my makeup, it just it slides right off? And I'm like, well, how hard are you rubbing your face? And they're like, you know, when you like itch your nose or like you gotta, you, you just rub. And I'm like, or if you're like resting your hand on your face, dude, I hate to be the bear of bad news. But that's, it's just, it's what's gonna happen. That's the honest truth. I don't wanna lie to you guys and be like, it will keep your makeup on no matter what you do. No, that's, that ain't it. That ain't it. Now, Skin Denavia and Urban Decay will help prevent transfer. Those are two that are meant to help prevent transfer, but it is never going to be transfer proof. I don't care who adds that. That's a lie. Unless it is like airbrush alcohol-based makeup, it's, it's transferring. Sorry, it's the tea. <laughs> now, if you have more normal skin type, a drier skin type, something like the Morphe Prep and Set Spray is awesome. People hate me when I say it, but MAC Fix Plus is an awesome one for dry skin or if you just want to melt your makeup in and get that glow. People like to say all day that it's not a setting spray. I'm gonna push this along and let this happen. Go ahead, fight it in the comments, but Technically, it is a setting spray. Not all setting sprays are meant to, you know, like lock in makeup. Some are just meant to melt the makeup into the skin. Anastasia Dewey Set does the same thing. Um, I've been running out and I don't feel like ordering it, so I did mix a bit of the e.l.f. coconut mist in this because 
they have similar ingredients, so it's fine. But those are, these are almost identical, great for dry skin. Morphe does have a luminous version of this spray. They also have a mattifying version. The um, white canister of this, that it's shaped exactly like this and not in a spray bottle, that one is the mattifying one. What that does is it's mixed with a little bit of silica powder, so you wanna shake it first and then spray it into the skin. And that emits a layer of powder onto the skin, so if you want to refresh with that, and you know, lock in the makeup or say it's like, you're about to go out and you wore your face to work and you're like, oh my God, I look greasy. You would spray a bit of that on the face after, like after you get home and it'll absorb the excess oil that's sitting on top of the skin. And then after that, you can go in with a bit of your um, translucent powder or blotting powder and touch up. Fact, that's how you would do that. <laughs> um, another dry skin or just, you know, mature skin or if you have sensitive skin or if you have somebody who's flaky skin, the Lila B A Glow Mist. This is an awesome, awesome face mist. Spritzer is a bit aggressive, but it's so worth it. This one has a ton of skincare in it, like a ton of skincare in it. So if you want to really treat your skin, that's an expensive spray for the bottle. So you need a tiny, tiny bit, but um, I hate that it's worth every penny. This is my second one. You can see I barely touch it for that reason my personal favorite I will I will preach about this spray until I die so if you're like me and you want a little bit more of a glow to your skin this one watermelon glow mist from glow recipe has the finest mister has hyaluronic acid watermelon extract and a ton of other great skincare so it's technically also a toner or a toning spray Look at that mist So good. I will literally spray this all across my face. This is only $28, which I think is worth every penny. And look at the glow it gives to my skin. What foundation? Yes, I have my highlight on, but it doesn't make my skin look powdery, but it also doesn't make my skin look wet because the rest of it absorbs and then it leaves behind a little glow. It has like ultra fine reflex in it. And then say I'm having like an oilier day if it's like midsummer, then I'll take a mist of my Urban Decay, let that set in because I still get the glow from the glow mist, but I get the protection from the all nighter. Um, it is important to understand your skin type. It is important to understand what look you want. It's, un it's important just to understand what you're going for and what you're working with whenever you want to perfect your base. Does your foundation and your primer go together? Silicone primers, typically if you put them on the nose, what they're gonna do is they're gonna slide off. Um, are you moisturizing? Are you taking care of your skin? Is your powder a smoothing powder? If not, it's not gonna smooth your skin. Um, if you're more mature, are you using a heavier base? Are you using something that's not gonna, you know, smooth on the skin? That's just everything you wanna take into account when you're looking to perfect your base, as well as down to your blush, your highlight, and your placement, and your contour. So it, it is a lot, but it is all learnable, and that's what I'm here for. So I hope today's video really helped you guys out. It's one in the morning. <laughs> if you have any questions, um, you already know I like to reply to comments, and I hang out in the comments all the time. Leave them down below. I'm always going to be there to help you guys out. Leave any video ideas down below. I'm lurking that. I do, like I said, already have a contour, blush, bronzer, and highlight video. That will be saved probably for next week or if you guys really blow this one up out of the water i'll post it later this week so thank you so, so much for subscribing um you guys got me to 1k in a matter of two and a half three days that is absolutely insane absolutely insane um so subscribe if you haven't if you're new here make sure you like this video drop a comment and ring the bell so you get all the notifications when a new video of mine goes live um it's here we're doing this maritza has a youtube channel now so like and is actively gonna post on it i've said that for years but now there's a 100k of you on tiktok that will actually hold me accountable <laughs> Um, oh, if you don't already, follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Everything will be linked down below. All the products that I talked about in this video will also be linked down below just to help you guys shop a little bit easier. 
um, at this point in time, we're still in quarantine, so love that. Um, but thank you guys so, so much for watching. I am so, so, so grateful to have you here with me um, and on my YouTube channel and that I have people who pushed me to do this. So thanks. I hope you do amazing. Remember that everything is working out. Everything is good. You are good. So let me know what else I can do. Bye.